In this video, let's learn about HTTP response syntax. We have been dealing with HTTP requests so far, so let's move on to HTTP response. So first of all, we need to know the purpose of HTTP response. And for that, let's take a look at this diagram first. We talk about the HTTP request, and the purpose of that is for the browser, which is the client, to provide requirement, the web server, requirement about what the client wants right what the client wants now the http response is the opposite the purpose of http response is for the server to provide information to the client in order to help the client to use right because the server serves data information to the browser now the browser needs to take that response and render that somehow in the browser so how that's the question therefore in the response there are not only the content that needs to be rendered in the browser but also some extra information that provided to the browser to help the browser to render that so first of all let's understand the syntax of the response Let's go to this HTTP request syntax and let's copy this because the syntax is actually very similar between the two. So let's copy that and paste it over here. This particular one currently is for HTTP request and for HTTP response, it's very simple. Remember, there's three different sections in the HTTP request, right? The first one is the request line. And then from starting from the second line, it's the headers. And we have one header for each line. After a character turn, we have the second one. And it will have more than another character return and then the header key and the header value, just like that. So similarly, we have our response line in the first line. And instead of method, we're having different things. So we have the version first. And then after that, we have the status code. And after the status code, I have to mention that there is a space right here. From here to here, there's a space between the version and status code. And there's another space here. And then we have our status description. Okay, so it looks like this. We have our version first, and then we have our status code. And after another space, we have our status description. And after that, it's exactly the same as HTTP request. We have a bunch of headers zero or many and after the headers we have a empty line here and after that we have our body the body contains the content that needs to be rendered in the browser in the case of regular web application right and then the headers describes the content in order to help the browser to render the content in the browser properly right so in that case we don't have the accept headers and accept language in the headers anymore we have different things. For example, we have a date header, a common header, right? And let's say today is October 7th, 2024. Uh, and, and there's going to be time as well, right? And after the day, we have server. So in this case, we're using Castro server. And then after that, we have another key value pair it could be, let's say content type. And let's say in this case, it's text slash HTML. And then we could have content length that describes how many characters are in the body for the content. Let's say 150, right? So on and so forth. We could have many headers for the server to describe the body. And then we have the bodies, right? And let's say hello world is what is written in the body. So this is an example of the HTTP response. So again, three different parts. We have the first one is the response line. Response line right here. After that, we have zero or many different headers. Again, it's key value pair separated by colon. After that, we have our third part, which is the body. The body has a empty line right over here that separates the body from the headers. All right, so let's actually have our web application running right here and let's observe the developer tool just like what we did for the request so f12 bring up the developer tool now we have to refresh this in order to see it we refresh that and click on the request that we want to see now again like i mentioned this is a little bit confusing we have our headers over here and it contains both the response headers as well as the request headers. Let's collapse everything and focus our energy on the response headers. Open it up and check this. Now we see the raw format of course it doesn't contain a body yet. So we can observe the first line, right? This is the response line. It contains a version and then a space status code. 
which is HTTP 200. We're going to talk about that status code later. Another space right here, and then the status description. So that means that HTTP 200 means okay, everything is successful. We have our actual date and time. We have our server. So this is a header, key value pair, another header, key value pair, another header, value pair. Now let's go to our response tab. So this response is not a full response, but it's only the body part. It contains the body of, and you can see that this corresponds to what is being rendered in the browser window. So you can see these are the commonly used headers. We have date, server, encoding. Right? It all helps the browser to render. And some other headers that are very common are content type, content length, set cookie. Some of them we're going to cover in the next video when we talk about the HTTP context object, which contains the response object within it. In this video, this is everything about just remember the basic syntax of our HTTP response and the purpose of HTTP response is to help the browser to render. Okay, that's everything I want to talk about in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.